Alrighty, y'all. So, alright. So we've got Unit Nine, Day One. Uh, the arithmetic sequence. So, in arithmetic sequences are really just. Uh, it's all about a pattern, okay? And in particular, it's an adding pattern, in which we add the same amount every time. All right. Now, every, every arithmetic sequence is going to follow a very specific. Uh, formula. Okay, and that's what we have right here with the uh, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 d, where a sub n is the nth term, a sub 1 is the first term, n is the term position, and d is a common difference. And we'll go over what all of those mean in just a minute. So, let's go ahead and dive into this, and it'll help you understand what all these different terms that we're talking about mean. Well, these different uh, words and what we're trying to figure out. Okay? So, number one, okay, is asking us to write the, it's asking, first of all, whether each sequence appears to be arithmetic or not. So, with this, what we're going to look for is we're going to look for something to be the same jump every time. So this is minus 4, this is minus 4, and minus 4. So we're minusing 4 every time. So yes, this is an arithmetic sequence. Now the equation, we're going to use this same equation right here, only we're going to put some different numbers and letters in there instead of what's there. Okay? So let's see. So we've got a sub n that's going to stay that way. All right. Now it's a, now it asks for a sub one. Now a sub one is going to be the first number in the sequence, which is twelve in this case. Okay. Plus n. Okay. And n can be any term. Okay. And we can keep. And it's asking about the term number. All right. And then, let's see, we've got, we're going to go with, let's see, minus 1. And then times the difference, okay? And then the common difference is just how much you're jumping by each time. So in this case, it's negative 4. So there's that. All right, and then it's asking for the next three terms. So all we have to do is just subtract 4 from 0. That will give us the next one of 3. Minus, eight, or minus 4 from that is going to be negative 8, and then negative 12, and then so on and so forth. All right, now number 2. We'll notice that's a jump of plus 3, plus 5, and then plus 7. Since it is a a different jump every time, we cannot say that this is arithmetic. So no. And then we don't have to do the other stuff. All right. So let's see what comes next. Number three. On this one, we're going to add four, and then add four, and then add four. So the arithmetic, so that is a yes. Now the arithmetic sequence is going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, which in this case is the first term in the sequence, which is 9, plus n minus 1, okay? And then our jump every time is 4, all right? And then our next uh, three terms, we're just going to add 4 each time. So 21 plus 4 is 25. And 25 plus 4 is 29. And then 33. And that's it. Alright, next one. Okay, we've got 6 plus 2 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. So yes, it appears to be arithmetic in nature. So we can come up with a sequence. So a sub n equals the first term in the sequence, which is 6, plus 
n minus, and then that's going to be 1, and then we're multiplying, or we're going to multiply it by 2, which is our common difference. And then ask for the next three terms in the sequence. So 12 plus 2 is 14, and then 16, and then 18, and it's going to keep on going forever. All right? Okay, next one. All right, let's see what we got here. So y'all usually see these fractions, and then y'all kind of panic a little bit, and you're like, oh, nope, I can't do that. It's got fractions. We're done. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, fractions aren't that bad. Okay? Our jump from negative 3 to, pos to negative 1 is plus 2, so it's just plus 2 fourths. And you can leave it as plus 2 fourths. That's fine. It's just scratch work. Plus 2 fourths, and then plus 2 fourths. Alright? So, what does that mean? Well, that means first off that this is an arithmetic sequence. Alright? My, my arithmetic sequence equation is going to be a sub n equals negative 3 over 4 plus n minus 1 on the outside of 2 fourths. Alright? And you can leave it at, like, you could do 2 fourths, but we all know that 2 fourths is really just one half. And as your final answer, that's what you should have, is something that's final, finalized and neat looking. Alright? Now the next three terms of this, well, we need to add essentially two-fourths to three-fourths, which is going to be five-fourths. There we go. So we got five-fourths. Okay, and then we're going to add another two-fourths to that, and that's seven-fourths. And then nine-fourths. There we go. Now, six. Okay, we're going to add a third each time, or rather, not add a third, we're subtracting a third. So, minus one-third, and then minus one-third. So it appears to be arithmetic in nature. So... That's a sub n equals two thirds plus n minus one times negative one third. And there we have it. Okay? Now it's asking for the next three terms, which are going to be negative one third, negative two thirds and negative three-thirds, which is really just negative one. And then it keeps on going. All right. Next up, we've got number seven. And if we look at this, that's going to be plus two, plus three, and plus four. And that, as you can plainly see, is not an arithmetic sequence. So we don't have to worry about it after that point. Now we can minus 3 on this one, minus 3, and minus 3. So that is a yes. The arithmetic sequence equation is a sub n equals the original number is 4 plus n minus 1 on the outside of negative 3. Our next three terms, we're going to subtract 3 from negative 5, which is going to be negative 8. And then subtract negative 3 again, that's negative 11. And subtract 3 from that, and that's negative 14. And there it is. It keeps on going. All right. That's not too bad. Pretty easy stuff. Next up, we've got... Number nine, okay? And now they're switching up our, our instructions just a little bit. 
Okay, it says to find the indicated term of the arithmetic sequence. All right, so it's asking us to find the 25th term of this sequence. All right, now it went ahead and it gave us A1, and this is actually N right here. Okay, that's what we have been basically dancing around a little bit and just putting a variable there. All right, so on this one, that's going to be A sub 25 equals, and let me make that look a little bit more like a 25. So it's going to be A sub 25 equals the initial term is negative 5, okay, plus 25 minus 1 times negative 2. Okay, and keep in mind, all that we're doing is we're plugging into this equation right here. A sub n, A sub 1, plus n minus 1 times d. So, that's what I just plugged into. Alright, and all you got to do is either crunch the numbers, use your PEMDAS, all that good stuff, and then A sub 25 winds up equaling negative... 53. Alright? Now you can do the same thing on number 10. Okay? We're going to go A sub 12 equals our initial number is 4.2 plus N minus 1 times D of 1.4. So now we plugged all that in our n was actually our n was was 12 sorry okay so 12 minus 1 is 11 11 times 1.4 Alright, so that's going to be a sub 12 equals, let's see, 4.2 plus 15.2, okay, and then we wind up with 19.6, and there we have it, alright, so that's not too horrible, so, Next thing, okay, we got number 11. Let's see, we've got a sub n, which is going to be a sub 16, equals 4 is our initial number, okay, plus 16 minus 1, and we've got to find our d, our common difference. So 4 to 8 is plus 4, 8 to 12 is plus 4, 12 to 16 is plus 4, so it's all plus 4. So, positive 4. So, let's see. 16 minus 1 is 15. 15 times 4 is 60. So, A sub 16 equals 64. And there it is. Alright, and now on to the next one. Alright, so we're going to do A sub 60 equals 11 plus n minus 1. Okay, so 11 to 5 is minus 6, and then minus 6 to negative 1, so we're doing negative 6's. So, let's see, and then we are looking to find the 60th term in this sequence. So, a sub 60 equals 11 plus, let's see, 59 times negative 6, so let's see, 59 times 6, so it's negative 354, a sub 60 equals 11 plus negative, is that again, 354, 
So a sub 60 equals, that's going to be negative for 3, 40, 3. And there we have it. Alright. So next up it says, given the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, find the first three terms and the term named in the problem. So here's what, what they're asking us to do. First off, what they're telling us to do is to find the first three terms. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to actually plug 1, 2, and 3 in for n. So a, a sub 1 equals, okay, so we plug in a 1, that's negative 7, plus 7 times 1, okay, so that's 7 plus negative 7, and that equals 0. All right, a sub 2 equals negative 7 plus 7 times 2, 14, and that's 7. a sub 3, negative 7 plus 7 times 3, and that's 14. All right, and then the last one, okay, it says the term named. Oops named in the problem. Okay, so that's a sub 34 equals negative 7 plus 7 times negative, or no, not negative, positive 34, whoops, don't know where I got the negative from. So, 34, okay, so a sub 34, after you crunch the numbers on that, you should get 231. Okay? And there you have it. There's that. Now, same thing for number 14. Alright? Same routine. So we take 1 and we're going to plug it in. 65 minus 100. So a sub 1 equals 65 minus 100 times 1. So that's going to be negative 35. a sub 2 equals 65 minus 100 times 2. That's going to be negative 135. a sub 3 equals 65 minus 100 times 3. And that's going to be negative 2. 35. Alright, now a sub 39 equals 65 minus 65 minus 100 times 39. After you crunch the numbers on that, you will find that a sub 39 winds up equaling negative 3, 8, Three, five, and there you have it. All right. Now, next up, we've got this Eric kid. Okay, he wants to write an expression that will always, no matter what, always produce a negative integer. Which of the following will always? The key word in this is always produce a negative integer. Okay, if it always produces a negative integer, then that means that there is no possibility, no way, no matter what number you pick, it will produce a negative number. Okay, so let's see if we can disprove a few of these in order to make something stand out for us. So on A, if we plug in a negative 1 here, all right, negative 1 plus 3 is going to be 2, okay, positive 2, so we can't use A, okay, we're looking for something that's going to produce a negative number no matter what, and we have to use a number that's smaller than 0. So, 
The next one, let's try that. So let's try negative 2 here. Okay, and I'm just picking random numbers out of my butt. So we got negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. That's positive. That doesn't work. So let's try C. Let's try negative 1. So negative 1 squared plus 3. So that's going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 is 4, and that's positive. So it leaves us with only one answer choice, and that would have to be it. Okay? Alright. Now, number 16. Number 16 is a very interesting question. Okay? A bag of cat food weighs 18 pounds. Each day, the cats are fed half a pound of food. Okay? How much does the bag of cat food weigh after 30 days? So, 18 pound bag of cat food. Okay? And we're going to minus 0.5 pounds. Okay? So, after one day, it's going to be 17 and a half. Times 2, though... And it would be at 17, and then so on and so forth. So we're going to just plug in a variable. We're going to call it D. Okay? So a bag of cat food weighs 18 pounds each day. Okay? Now, how much does the bag of cat food weigh after 30 days? So we're going to go, fifth, we're going to go 18 minus 0.5 times 30. So that's 18 minus 15, and that equals 3. So there it is. Okay. Now, each time a truck stops, it drops off 250 pounds of cargo. It started with a load of 2,000 of 2, pounds. So 2,000 pounds minus 250 S. And S stands for stops. So 2,000 minus 250 S. So after the first stop, it's down to 1,750. After that, it'd be down to 1,500. After that, it'd be 1,250. After that, it'd be 1,000. After that, it'd be 1,750. Okay, or rather, 750. Okay, so so on and so forth. So it's wondering how much does it weigh after five stops. So 250 times five. So 250 times five is 1250. 2000 minus 1250 is going to be 750. And there we have it. That's our final answer. Okay. All right. So, oops they were too far. Okay, and now on to the last page. So, here we have one of my favorite parts of the whole arithmetic sequence thing, and that was the, you know, figures, the pictures, okay, and how to make things work around a picture. So, it says to, first off, to create a table of values, all right, to represent what's going on in this picture. Now, the X is going to be the figure numbers, okay? And then the Y is going to be how many boxes they have. So one, two, three, four, because there's four figures, all right? Figure one has one block. Figure two has four blocks. Figure three has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And then figure 4 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blocks. Ah, 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 sorry. Um, going back to my old count days from Sesame Street. So now it says to write an equation to represent this pattern. So we've got y equals, all right, now the way that I'm going to do this is I want to I want to do this using the, uh, the arithmetic sequence that we've come up with, 
Alright, and it's going to be the easiest method to do this. So we start off with one block. Okay, and then we're going to go x minus 1 times 3. Because we're adding 3 each time. Now, that is a perfectly viable equation. That is just fine. If you wanted to reduce that down to say, hmm, let's go y equals 1 plus 3x minus 3. That would be y equals 3x minus 2. If you wanted to say that, it would be just fine. And it would work just as well. So, how many squares are in figure 12? So what we can do is we can go y equals 1 plus 12 minus 1 times 3. So, that would be, let's see, 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 times 3 is 33. Plus 1 is 34. And there it is. So, the next thing up is... What, at which stage will we have 16 squares? So we're going to have to work this a little bit backwards this time. So we're going to go 16 equals 1 plus x minus 1 times 3. Alright, so let's see. To start things off, we need to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. So that's 15 equals x minus 1 times 3. Divide each side by 3, and that's 5 equals x minus 1. We add 1 to both sides, and that's 6 equals x. And there it is. Boom. On stage 6, we would have 16 squares. Okay? And we can do the same kind of a pattern down here on these chips. So it says... We're going to use the below table, the figure below, to answer the following questions. So it says, first off, to create a table of values to represent the relationship between the number of tokens and the stack number for the first five stacks. Now, I know that y'all looks just a smidge bit different, but y'all have the same questions. So it's all good. Now, stack one, two, three, four, and five. So that's going to be 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. All right. And then it says write, oops, write an equation to represent this pattern. Okay. So I don't know if you all noticed, but we're adding three chips each time. We're adding three more chips. So that's going to be y equals, we started off with 2, so 2 plus n minus 1, but instead of using n, let's use x, since that's the variable that they chose for us. And then we're adding 3 each time, so 3. How many tokens are in stack? 12. So, we're just going to go y equals 2 plus 12 minus 1 times 3. 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 times 3 is 33. Plus 2 is 35. And there we go. Alright, now it wants to know which stack will have 29 tokens. So that's going to be 29 equals 2 plus x minus 1 times 3. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, and that's 27 equals x minus 1 times 3. Divide both sides by 3, and that's 9 equals x minus 1. Now we add 1 to both sides, and that's going to be 10 equals x. So on stage 10, it would have 29 tokens. And that's the end of the arithmetic sequence notes. Thank you very much.